Like any major Hollywood studio, Disney has made their fair share of deals with production companies to help produce movies for them. One short-lived but fascinating alliance was with Synergy Pictures. The name may not immediately ring any bells, but they produced quite a few high-profile films for the Mouse House in the 90s. Synergy was the brainchild of Andrew Vajna, who had previously made a name for himself as the co-founder of Kuroko Pictures. While running Kuroko with Mario Kasser, he helped finance and produce films like the Rambo series, Angel Heart, Jacob's Ladder, and Total Recall, among several others. In late 1989, he decided to leave Kuroko, selling his remaining shares to Kasser, and start a new production company, immediately signing a deal with Disney to distribute the films. The first movie produced by Synergy was Medicine Man, directed by John McTiernan. That movie had the potential to be a hit, as McTiernan was coming off a string of successes with Predator, Die Hard, and The Hunt for Red October, and it starred Sean Connery in the lead role. However, it received terrible reviews from critics and lost money on its original release. Synergy was also a partner in the live-action Super Mario Bros. movie, which I don't have to remind you was a box office flop. They did finally score a decent-sized hit with the western Tombstone. This was despite the film having a difficult production, with Vajner firing the original director, and it has been rumored that Kurt Russell was really the one calling the shots behind the scenes, but because of Director's Guild rules, he cannot be credited as director. Tombstone found an audience during the Christmas 1993 season, and word of mouth, including from President Bill Clinton of all people, helped keep it going into the new year, and it continued to find a bigger audience on home video. This was the kind of movie Vajna was seeking to make at Synergy, star-driven films made on a decent-sized budget. The box office success of Tombstone was a rare exception for Synergy, though. The military comedy Renaissance Man, directed by Penny Marshall and starring Dan DeVito, attracted little interest in the summer of 1994. Then there was the erotic thriller Color of Night. Vajner clashed with the film's director, Richard Rush, over which cut would be released in theaters, with the DGA even having to be brought in. Ultimately, Vajna's preferred version made it to theaters, but it was destroyed by critics in a box office flop. Rush's director's cut was eventually released on VHS, and it performed better in that format, but he sadly never directed another movie again. Synergy would also help produce the third Die Hard movie, and the story behind this is quite fascinating. Bruce Willis had disagreements with Lawrence Gordon and Jill Silver, the producers of the first two movies. Andrew Vajna was then brought in to serve as an executive producer and help oversee the production of Die Hard with a Vengeance. He then made a deal with 20th Century Fox for him to pre-sell the foreign rights, something Vajner commonly did with the movies he worked on. The movie ended up being distributed internationally by Disney under their Buena Vista International label. So yes, Disney had a stake in John McClane long before they acquired Fox. Die Hard of a Vengeance performed decently in the North American box office, but was an even bigger hit in the rest of the world. Even though it was the 10th highest grossing film of 1995 domestically, it was number one worldwide, just beating out Toy Story. The rest of Sinji's slate that year did not fare so well. One was their big-budget adaptation of the British combo character Judge Dredd. Despite its prime summer release date and a lot of promise, the film was not well received by critics or fans of the source material, with Sylvester Stallone later calling it a missed opportunity. While it performed a lot better internationally than in North America, that was not enough to recoup the $90 million budget. An even bigger disaster was The Scarlet Letter, starring Demi Moore and Gary Oldman. The movie was hated by critics, especially for deviating from Nathaniel Hawthorne's classic novel, and the execution drew unintentional laughs from screenings. The expectation was probably that it was a potential Oscar contender, especially with Roland Joffe in the director's chair. However, it came and went from theaters and made an embarrassing $10 million at the domestic box office. Faring better critically was Nixon, Oliver Stone's biopic of the former U.S. president. Stone originally planned to make the movie a new regency, but Arnon Milchan's proposed budget was lower than he wanted. He then pitched the project to Andrew Vajner, who agreed to produce it, and Stone was able to get the budget he wanted. Nixon was notable for being the rare Disney release that was publicly slammed by Walt's daughter Diane, as the Disney family was very good friends with the Nixons. Despite solid reviews, four Oscar nominations, and the additional media attention surrounding its depiction of Richard Nixon, the over three-hour movie pulled in disappointing numbers at the box office, although there was probably always a ceiling for that movie. Synergy was also producer on Up Close and Personal, which was similarly criticized for deviating from real events. The screenplay, inspired by the life of NBC anchorwoman Jessica Savage, spent many years in development, with the finished film removing most of her story, much to the annoyance of the film's screenwriters. The movie was not a big hit, but it did feature the chart-topping Celine Dion song Because You Love Me, which is probably one of the few things widely remembered about it. Andrew Vajna had acquired the film rights to Andrew Lloyd Webber's hit stage musical Evita in 1993, after a few studios had difficulty getting a film adaptation off the ground. Interesting enough, one of those was Disney, which had bulked at the budget. With Vajna helping to finance the movie, Disney was back on board. Oliver Stone had initially signed on to direct, but he dropped out, although he still managed to retain his screenplay credit. Alan Parker ended up taking over. 
due to Eva Peron being such a beloved figure in Argentina, there was naturally controversy over the production, especially the decision to cast Madonna, even though the movie received mixed reviews and managed to pull in solid numbers at the box office. After this is when things really took a turn for the worst. The political thriller Shadow Conspiracy flopped, although never played on more than 837 screens in North America. A movie that really hurt Synergy was one that was never even finished. Bruce Willis had signed on to produce and star in a romantic comedy titled Broadway Brawler. After 20 days, production shut down, as Willis was having major disagreements with several of the crew members, including the director, Lee Grant. Grant and several others were fired from the movie, and even though Dennis Dugan became briefly attached as the new director, he never filmed any footage, as Disney and Vajna collectively agreed to not continue. It was that much of a headache behind the scenes. Disney did take Synergy off the hook and gave them back the $17 million they already spent. As for Bruce Willis, Walt Disney Studios chairman Joe Roth made a deal with him that he could pay off what had been lost on Broadway Brawler if he made three movies for them at a fraction of his usual salary. In the end, the troubles surrounding that movie actually worked out in Willis' favor. As a result of his new three-picture deal with Disney, he starred in two of the biggest hits of his career, Armageddon and The Sixth Sense, and the family film The Kid. Synergy, on the other hand, would end up winding down its operation shortly after this mishap. Vajna let Disney attain all rights to the movies they produced together, with the international rights for Die Hard with a Vengeance going to 20th Century Fox. One of the last Synergy movies was the monster movie Deep Rising, which was released to little fanfare in early 1998. However, the film that would be the final release under that name was the infamous comedy and Alan Smithy film Burn Hollywood Burn. Disney quietly buried it in only 19 theaters, but that did not stop critics from seeing the film and giving it scathing reviews, and it led to the end of the fake director's pseudonym Alan Smithy. After Synergy shut down, Andrew Wagner reteamed with his old partner, Mario Cassert, started a new production company, which included controlling the rights to the Terminator license. He also acquired a video game company and renamed it Synergy Interactive. Neither of those lasted very long, though, and he eventually returned to his native Hungary, where he was involved with financing local productions. His involvement was a big boost to Hungary's film industry, including helping to fund the Oscar-winning historical drama Son of Saul. Andrew Wagner died in 2019, leaving behind an impressive list of producing credits. Synergy Pictures may have had more flops than successes with Disney not being too happy with the venture in the end, but at least tried different things, from action movies to dramas to even a musical that its founder hoped would catch the audience's eye. See you next time.